here we have a database of products, suppliers, and categories. We can manage our inventory of products using this database. Let's create an application that allows online access to this data. Let's give this project a name. Go ahead and press Create. Let's press Next and connect to our database. We will need to add membership support to this database. Let's go ahead and add the default ASP.NET membership. Now that we've connected to our database and added membership, let's create a few models. First, let's set up products. This data looks correct. Let's go ahead and save our model. Next, let's do categories. We'll sort it by category name. This looks like the result that we want. Go ahead and save. Finally, let's do suppliers. It will be sorted by company name. Let's remove the home page field. This looks like the data that we want as well. Let's go ahead and save the model. Let's proceed to generate the application. Go ahead and log in. Notice that we have access to all the products in the database. Same thing with the suppliers records and categories. If we were to put this application online, then every user logging into the application will be able to see every record. Let's turn this application into a multi-tenant app by limiting the records that each user can see when they log into their account. In order to do that, let's switch back to the diagram. First, we'll want to add a table that will link individual user records to suppliers that they will have access to. Products will be filtered by the supplier ID. The categories will be shared by all users. Let's create a table called User Suppliers. Each user supplier record will have a user supplier ID, primary key, as well as a user ID. We are using ASP.NET membership, so the type of the user ID is unique identifier. Every record will also have a supplier ID. This supplier ID will have a foreign key reference to the suppliers table. Go ahead and save the diagram. We'll need to refresh the project's database schema. 
make sure that the checkbox for database schema has changed recently is enabled and press refresh. Next, let's go ahead and add a model for user suppliers. Go ahead and save the model. We would like to write a single dynamic access control rule that applies to all relevant data controllers. In order to do this, let's enable shared business rules. When this feature is enabled, all business rule classes will inherit from the shared business rules class. This will mean that if configured properly, the same code will run for every single controller. Let's go ahead and press finish. Go ahead and open the project designer. Switch to the controllers tab. Configure the user ID under user suppliers with item style user ID lookup. Go ahead and browse to generate the relevant files and changes into the application. We can notice a new menu item visible. There are currently no records visible under user suppliers. We can manually add records to this controller. This will connect the user called user to the supplier. However, this table is not yet used by any dynamic access control rules. Let's go ahead and implement them now. In the project designer, go ahead and press develop to open the project in Visual Studio. Under the app code folder, open custom, rules, Shared business rules. We'll need to override the enumerate dynamic access control rules method on shared business rules class. I'll go ahead and type in override enumerate. Once we've selected it in the dropdown prompt, go ahead and press enter. This will give us some boilerplate code. Let's keep the call to the base method and add our additional code underneath. First, this dynamic access control rule will only be added if the user is not in the administrator's role. We will call the method register access control rule. This access control rule will be triggered when the field supplier ID is present. A short SQL statement will define our filter. The result of the previous SQL expression will be used as an exclusive filter by specifying access permission allow. Finally, we'll want to go ahead and pass some parameters to our query, specifically the user ID property. We can use an anonymous object. The name of the property will be bound to the parameter prepended with an at symbol. The value of the property will be assigned as the parameter. C Sharp can infer the member name, so that way we don't have to say user ID twice. Make sure to save the file and refresh your browser. ASP.NET will recompile your application with the updated code. If we navigate to the suppliers page, 
you'll notice that we'll still be able to see all 29 suppliers. This is because we're logged in as the administrative account. Let's go ahead and switch to the user. Notice that we only have access to the single supplier that the administrator has assigned to us previously. If we look under the products page, we'll only be able to view two products that have the supplier assigned. The categories page is unfiltered. Let's see what happens when we try to create a new supplier. The supplier was saved, but we don't have access to it yet. We could use the business rule on the insert command on the supplier's controller in order to insert a corresponding user supplier's record. As an alternative, let's write some custom code in the after SQL action phase that will be executed after every SQL action. Let's go ahead and override the method after SQL action. Make sure to keep the base call. Let's go ahead and try to find the supplier ID field value object from the result.values property. Using link, we can go ahead and try to select the field value object where the name is equal to supplier ID. If we found supplier ID, we'll go ahead and grab the first one. And let's go ahead and check to see if there's an associated user suppliers record already. If there is none, then we'll go ahead to insert the correct record in user suppliers. Let's drop a breakpoint on the first line and start debugging from Visual Studio to see how this works. Go ahead and log into the app using the user account. Let's go ahead and create a new supplier. We know that the supplier has been inserted because this code is being executed in after SQL action. We've gone ahead and pulled up the field value object containing supplier ID. We can see the new supplier ID is 32. This has been supplied to us by SQL Server. Next, let's see if there is a corresponding user suppliers record where the supplier ID and user ID are equal to the current user and the newly inserted supplier. We can see that the no records have been found and we'll need to go ahead and insert into the table. Now we've inserted the matching record into the user suppliers. We can go ahead and press continue. Notice that we now have visibility into the S3 supplier. Let's go ahead and create some products associated with this supplier. We 
we've gone ahead and hit our breakpoint again. Let's see if anything happens. It has not found the supplier ID in the result set from coming from the server. We can see that we now have access to this product as well. What happens if we try to select a supplier when creating a product that we don't have access to? It now prompts us to create this new supplier, which will then create the corresponding user supplier record. We now have two products, one for each supplier. Three suppliers this user has access to. Let's go ahead and take a look at user suppliers. We can see that this user ID is bound to these three suppliers. Let's go ahead and try to log in as a separate non-administrative user. This user does not have access to any products, nor do they have access to any suppliers. They also are not able to see any user supplier bindings. Let's go ahead and create a new supplier under this user. The binding has been automatically created for this user. If we switch back to the user account, this user does not have access to our other user's information. If we switch to the administrative account, We now have access to all the records. Let's go ahead and take a look at the data under SQL Server Management Studio. We can see each user supplier record corresponds to a user that's created a specific supplier as well as any associated products.